Holy cow! What kind of thing do you think would cause a scientist to exclaim, Holy cow! A cow that has been hit by a lot of ammunition. Or maybe they just cherish it. It's a holy cow. A sacred cow. Is that really the, the, yeah. the specific area of a scientist? Yeah, cow scientist. Cow <laughs> scientist? Yeah. Jesus spoke to the scientist through the cow. Well, what I can <laughs> tell you is that I believe holy cow is the eureka of the food and agricultural science world because Robert Furl of the University of Florida's Institute of Food and Agricultural Sciences um, and his colleagues exclaimed this, holy cow, after having successfully grown earth plants in moon soil. Moon soil no less, by the way, which was brought back from the moon by Neil Armstrong. Good on him. Or one of his two pals. One of the... Buzz Aldrin. And the other guy. Jamp. Who's the other one? Michael... Something. There is a, it's Michael something. Oh, wow. I can't believe you actually got... I didn't no, remember it. I, I didn't knew remember it was that Michael. at all. It's Michael something. It's Michael... Not Olsen. No, not Olsen. I knew it was Michael, but I didn't know anything uh, else. Michael Walton. Michael, no, Michael Moon Michael, Man. I just Michael Googled Cook? Michael Moon Man, and that's a character on EastEnders. Michael uh, Moon Man! <laughs> <laughs> um, Michael on the moon? Michael, <laughs> Michael, Michael Collins. Michael, Michael Collins. Collins. Michael Collins. <laughs> Michael Collins. <laughs> well, he didn't go to the moon. He just orbited the moon for a bit, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. good old... Neil, Buzz, and Michael Moonman brought back some moon dirt, uh, as did some other astronauts. So, this mo moon soil was unfortunately not on the moon when we did our growing of the Earth plants. Because, number one, there is currently not anybody on the moon, as far as we know. And number two, the moon doesn't have any air which is where plants get most of their carbon. Mm. But NASA gave the University of Florida a very generous gift. What do you think the gift could have been? Some dirt from the moon. How much do you think they might have given them? Oh, gosh. Three tons. Uh, five kilograms. Lower. One kilogram. Lower. Oh, 500 oh, grams? One gram. Higher. Two grams. Higher. 100 uh, grams. Lower. 50 grams? grams? Lower. 40 grams? grams? Lower. 20 grams? Lower. 10? 18 grams. 15? Lower. 14. 12 grams. 12 grams. Wow, champ, wow. you got it. I don't it. know how I got it. Ding, ding, ding. 12 ding. grams of dirt they from the moon. Uh, yes. I uh, mean, I, I get uh, that it's about expensive. About 50 years, 60 years later as well. They've only just given them it. It's taken them a while because when they got back from the moon, they basically locked up most of the moon dirt. So <laughs> they then, these guys, um, the, these scientists rather, <laughs> um, planted thale cress in this moon soil, which they were given by NASA. Um, the, the moon soil specifically came from Apollo's 11, 12, and 17. So other moonwalkers were involved in getting this moon dirt to Earth. So it might have actually been four grams from each mm -hmm. uh, of the separate missions. Um, so according to the, uh, the Guardian, uh, and this is a quote, the downside was that after the first week, the coarseness and other properties of the lunar soil stressed the small flowering weeds so much that they grew more slowly than seedlings planted in Weirdly, fake moon dirt that we make on Earth. Now, we've talked about fake moon dirt that we make on Earth before. We've spoken about fake Martian dirt that we make on Is Earth. Is it fake Martian yeah. dirt? That was Martian. So we've got, um, I think I've still got some about here somewhere. Yeah, we've uh, Martian regolith um, and the lovely people at the Martian Garden sent us yes. some. So if you'd like to grow some things in Martian soil, mm. head over to the Martian Garden and uh, check them out. They're very lovely people. So what made me kind of, what I found quite funny about this is that the control, in this, in this experiment, you basically got dirt from Apollo 11, Dirt from Apollo 12 and dirt from Apollo 17. So you haven't got a control. The control was fake moon dirt that we made. Um, and the fake moon dirt that we made was much better for the plants to grow in. Which suggests to me that the fake moon dirt that we made is not actually very good fake moon dirt. <laughs> because it's, it's just very good. It's just very good dirt. It's just very good dirt that's kind of moony. Um, so, yeah, that was, in, that was very interesting. But that is the control here. So we've got four experiments being run. Now, this experiment is in preparation for the NASA Artemis program, where we're going to go and send people back to the moon, hopefully to stay for a very long time. And we're wondering whether we'll be able to grow food to eat when we get there. Obviously, we can't just take a load of food with us because every gram you put on the um, on the space rocket is incredibly expensive. Um, uh, and also, we can't just take real dirt to the moon because that would be very, 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 very heavy. Uh, and we also can't take fake moon dirt to the moon because that would be uh, presumably just as heavy. So we had these three separate soil samples from the moon. Um, from these three three different missions, and they all performed slightly differently. Do you think you can 
wonder as to why that might be. Uh, from uh, dirt from three different missions. Yes. Okay. Uh, did the missions time? go to different parts of the moon, or oh. were they brought back at different times, and so they've been stored differently, and therefore decayed slightly differently? But then it wouldn't make a difference. That wouldn't make sense because it's on the moon. My immediate thought was like time. The amount of time in Earth's atmosphere. I was going to say exposure to, yeah, exposure to oxygen or something, surely. Corey, you were most spot on with your first answer, which is that different missions okay. the, go to different areas of the moon, but not quite for the reason you might think. Not right. necessarily because the moon is made up of different things in different areas, for the example. Sunlight. Exactly. Oh. So the Apollo missions landed at different parts of the moon, and each different area of the moon has had different levels of exposure to cosmic radiation and also to solar wind. Um, and so Apollo 11 samples, for example, were collected from an area of the moon called the Sea of Tra Tranquility. And they've had a billion or billions of years longer exposure um, because they are part of an older lunar surface. Um, they actually did much worse at growing plants. So this experiment has yielded one thing, which is we can officially say that Neil Armstrong's soil sucks at growing thalecress, um, which I know is a scientific discovery that you've all been waiting for. <laughs> wow, um, that, that's a really hard blow to take. Yeah, uh, I've might been, be the I've first been man staking my entire my entire personality on Neil Armstrong's soil being very, very good at growing fail mm. crests. Uh, well, I'm really sorry to have broken this news okay, to good. you. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's uh, I, I feel I just I'm devastated to be honest. I think I'll just get, take a leave of absence for some, from Sci Guys for a bit. Okay, well, you take all the time you need, Corey. Um, so it might be that when we go to the moon, um, us three, um, we might choose. <laughs> specific areas of the moon that sort of have newer deposits of moon soil, for example, um, from lava flows, in order to ensure that they've had less time being exposed to these like radiation and solar winds. Um, we might also might choose to take artificial lighting in order to give plants the light, because we know that plants quite like that. So remember to bring your soft boxes with you uh, on the plane. Might not be able to bring any food on or plane. soil on the plane. Sorry, it's gonna the... fly, me, fly me to the moon. <laughs> fly me to the moon. <laughs> Make sure you with easy don't jet. bring any soil. <laughs> <laughs> so plants in moon soil had a sort of a, apparently a wider range of sizes than is usual. So normally, if you plant um, one of these thale cresses in sort of earth soil, you might get sort of quite uniform sizing. So the the individual plants had had a, a larger range. Um, and that could be, apparently, and I quote, um, physical evidence that the plants were attempting to adapt the moon soil's chemical and structural makeup. And another quote, at the genetic level, the plants were pulling out the tools typically used to cope with stress, such mm. as salt and metal and oxidative stress. Oxidative stress. Oxidative stress, yeah. Oxidative stress. So we can infer that the plants perceive the lunar soil environment to be stressful. Oh. So we're kind of torturing... The plants. For yeah, science. that makes sense. That that makes a lot of sense because I would imagine that that well, the lunar soil hasn't been so readily developed by plants over many millions of years, like Earth soil has. So yes. it's less. Yeah, and they're starting from scratch essentially. There's also one little key thing which was quite buried actually in in the article I was I was reading about this, which is that we have not just planted this cress in soil we've also given it like a nutrient like we're not just giving it water we've given it like nutrient liquid mm -hmm. which means that like one of the main things that plants get from soil is the nutrients yeah they also use it as a substrate as like a structure potassium what is it potassium is it pota is it phosphorus oh gosh i can't remember oh that's so nitrogen bad. nitrogen and others phosphorus definitely yes Oh, I should remember this. Well, I'll stick it on screen when I make this a clip. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Look at this amazing piece of information about all the stuff that plants get from soil. So we are giving um, the plants sort of a, a, outside nutrients, but obviously those outside nutrients will be li much lighter for us to take to the moon than to take um, the dirt, because mm -hmm. dirt is also a load of other stuff, which we can just get that on the moon. Mm -hmm. So it might not be so much that moon soil is good for growing things in. It might just be that it's a good substrate because you do have to add the nutrients to, to it. But then to be fair, we have to add fertilizer. So uh, I've, I've just double checked and I was right. It was nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. Well, you got the nitrogen there. So yeah. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we add those anyway. With fer That's why we add fertilizers to soils, really, to add in. That's why manure is really good yeah. as fertilizer, I think, mostly yeah. for the nitrogen yeah. and whatnot. You know, so I mean, that's not... That's not too far off of earth soils, you know? Okay. So Obviously, there'll be more nutrients in earth soil, probably, but because mm -hmm. of... Um, biotic factors but yeah i mean yeah no it, it makes it makes sense it's not too far off of earth soil i assume okay so that's interesting i just sort of got the vibe that it was it might not be so much that this is good it might just be that it's not bad enough that we can't do it 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. because we're having to add a load of the nutrients, which, yes, admittedly, we do have to sometimes do on Earth. Um, but we also, but it's also just, like, not toxic, not so toxic the yeah. plant can't, like, get get over it basically um so what it's what they were saying was ultimately we would like to use the gene expression data to address how we can ameliorate the stress response to um where plants particularly the crops we want to grow um are able to grow in lunar soil with very little impact to their health so we're trying to figure out how to make plants less stressed um which is nice Probably don't put them in lunar soil i would say <laughs> well <laughs> just give them a nice home assuming you're going to put them in lunar soil how can you make them less stressed in that situation? <laughs> I should point out, by the way, because I, w- w- I'm not saying that lunar soil is going to be equally as um, good for plants as earth soil. What I mean is Most that, definitely not. No, what I mean is like, because <laughs> obviously plants will grow in earth soil, usually regardless of fertilizer, yeah. unless you salt that. But it's not, it's not like, as, it's not as though we don't add uh, sort of these nutrients yeah. to our own soils. Which... But the headline, which is amazing, is that we have been able to grow with a little bit of help, um, <laughs> Plants, it well, specifically this very limited piece of cress, um, in lunar soil, which is not a small deal. It's- I mean, mm. yeah, I was going to say it's conceivable that you could just build a sort of, I mean, a reverse greenhouse almost on the moon, yeah. right? Where you shield the plants from that extreme solar radiation, yeah. you know, well, cosmic radiation and uh, the solar winds and whatnot, and you have them just growing in that sealed off sort of lunar soil, yeah. I guess. So, I mean, it's... It's not too inconceivable to just jet like jet some stuff to the moon, and it significantly reduces the payload required to actually sustain what we hope will be a permanent base on the moon. If you don't have to take up a bunch of soil with you, yeah, I mean that that makes and honestly, realistically, once you've got plants, that is, I think, plants and microorganisms are two of the key steps to terraforming. Mm. And then you anywhere. get yeah, then you get oxygen, mm. yeah, um, which is then yeah, and then you get which some atmosphere that protects you from some of that. Yeah, it's very good. I mean, you need to take up some oxygen and some carbon dioxide and some other stuff to give you, you know, yeah. good atmosphere that it needs. But they've got they've then got a cycle going, you yeah. know, oh. which is really good. You can have a little farm, yeah. The moon. But cute. like genuinely, like you could have um, you could have the plants using. Like a sort of, I mean, obviously you need more oxygen than just what the plants provide, or you need a lot of plants. Yeah. But you could have the a- plants um, taking up, taking in your carbon dioxide and recycling it that way. So it'd be like a natural sort of air filter, essentially. So mm-hmm. one day we might look up at the moon and it's green. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I mean, I would. <sighs> like we've got a long time before the Earth stops being habitable. As long as we don't mess it up and kill ourselves. Then we've got a pretty good chance of terraforming the moon. Yeah, but the moon looking up at the moon and being green, that'd be so jarring. Yeah. I mean, well, I've had big because the people, it would slowly no, 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 get I mean, green. No, I know, but I mean, like, <laughs> as, no, I know, but what I'm saying is, it would be, it would be. I'm saying, if I was to look at the moon, it would be that would be a very jarring thing. It's so if odd. You went yeah. to the future. And then figure, yeah. finding out that in the past, oh, the moon has not always been green. Yeah, that'd be very. That'd be like a trip for kids. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and also uh, night times would be like green tinted. Ooh. I, actually, come to think of it, though. If we're thinking about this, I don't quite. One, do you know what part of the moon is it? The Earth-facing side of the moon that that is best. The soil is best. Well, it's not necessarily any particular part of the moon, um, because it you the the best areas are areas where there's been recent deposits. So anywhere that there's been like lava flows and stuff, and those could be anywhere. Oh yeah, on so the moon. it's true. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, I guess that. And you also may find through these experiments because it's quite new mm. ways of sort of making any part of the moon into more habitable, like hospitable yeah. soil. I mean, to be fair, I feel like you'd have to you have to build something real big to be able to see it from space. Uh, from uh, You'd have to be able to see it on the moon from Earth. Mm. You know what I mean? Oh, I mean turn the whole moon into a big fo- forest. Big forest. A forest moon, like Endor. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that'd be sick. <laughs> I, I don't like that. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. No, that's, pre- that's really... I, I like the idea of having a little base on the moon. Oh yeah, I mean that's the goal, isn't it? That's what the Artemis yeah. program is all about: is starting to establish a, a base on the moon. Yeah, which would be, I mean, just having a little. Let's hop to the moon for a yeah, bit. It's like a service yeah. station, a exactly. Holi- holiday. Yeah, well, you yeah. hop to the moon. You know, it's like going to the service station that's really, really close to your house. Yeah. Because you're like, oh man, that's a long journey. You need to head to this first service station, yeah. and then you go to the moon, and then you got to get to Mars. Because yeah. think about that's that like little three. thing they went to the moon in, right? They landed on the moon, and they mm. were able to escape the moon's gravity. With that little weak thing, you could bit, yeah. never do that on the uh, on the Earth. So as long as you can get that, like, you've got your big cargo ship that goes to the moon, mm. and like to get you to the moon base, and then after that, just jump. Get, taking off is really easy. Maybe not just <laughs> jump, but you could probably get off there with like a powerful car, and a that trampoline. sort of size engine. Yeah, no, I mean it's not. It wouldn't take that much to yeah. get to get out of the moon's orbit. Yeah, I mean relatively yeah. speaking, it's what it's. How much smaller than the Earth is the moon? It's I a feel quarter. like a quarter, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So a quarter. So yeah, it's not too bad. And then, and then the scale, the size of the gravity will be 
like the square is squared as well. Yeah, it's not it? exactly. Yeah, it's yeah. not that. It's not a one to. I don't think it's a one to one ratio, but it's mm, yeah. it, 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 it's it's still that's a it's relatively easy to get off the moon in comparison to Earth, right? Yeah. And also, there's no atmosphere to burn up in either, as well. No, it's, there's lots of there's lots of benefits to going to the moon. <laughs> Very yeah, that good. Biden. <laughs> Hurry up. <laughs> if you enjoyed that clip, head over to patreon.com forward slash SciGuys where you can find the full show. Or you can stay here and catch up on all SciGuys episodes. Or you can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at SciGuysPod to find out when we're doing more live shows. <laughs>